Hi, my name is EJ Massa. In my Spider 22 review, I pulled a bait and switch on you. Instead of making baby back ribs, I made beef short ribs. I feel awful, and I'm sorry I did that to you. To make it up to you, I'll make some ribs on my Weber kettle with a Spider 22 pellet attachment. And it works out because the Spider 22 is so hands off, and I have a newborn and a three year old to take care of. Here's a picture of a cute baby. Please like, comment, and subscribe if you like, like this baby. All right, to start, I got some baby back ribs from Costco. I'll freeze two of them because I only need one rack for dinner tonight. Looks like the membrane in the back has already been removed, so that's good. Also, while I was at Costco, I saw this pork barrel barbecue all-American seasoning and rub, and I was like, what the heck? Let me try it for the video. It seems like it doesn't have any sugar, and it's more of a spice rub than a sweet rub, but that's how I like it anyway. Opening it up, and you can see some dry herbs in there, too. So I'll sprinkle some of it on. Sprinkle time. Sprinkle time. Who brought the jingle bells to the sprinkle party? Oh, well. Sprinkle time. <clears throat> uh, excuse me. Uh, yes, the rub smells very herbaceous, like rosemary and chili powder and such. Made sure to season both sides, of course. I used my grill for other things, so I had to reattach the spider, but it's easy peasy. I topped off the hopper with the Lumberjack Competition Blend pellets. They have a sweeter, gentler taste, and that's what I'm in the mood for right now. In an update on this door, it seems like it loosened up over time and I can actually lock it into place now. My theory is, is that when I first started using this attachment, one, it was brand new, so it was probably all stiff, and also it was very cold out, so maybe all the metal parts contracted, but now that I've used it a bunch and it's been hot and humid, maybe things loosened up a bit. And that's good because that door was one of the dings I gave it in the initial review, and now my only complaint is that ash catcher is still a little stiff and wonky, but it's not a deal breaker. This will be my quicker ribs recipe, so I set the grill to 300 degrees Fahrenheit. So pellet grills in general have a subdued smoky flavor, and that's good because sometimes I don't want smoke. Sometimes I want ermac or reptile, but today I think I want smokier flavor. So I'm gonna reinforce the pellet cooker with a smoker tube filled with these beech wood chips. Beech produces a nice mild smoke, which according to the back of the packaging, goes well with pork. And packaging has never lied before. That mild beech smoke flavor should complement the competition blend pellets nicely. I add those to my smoker tube, lit a wax cube, and then I just kind of put it in the tube. This tube does have a cap, but I'm going to leave the tube open to maximize the airflow. I find if I leave the cap on, it just kind of snuffs out the flame. I put my ribs on, and as you can see, the smoker tube is smoking nicely. And after closing the lid, it's emitting a very nice and sweet smelling smoke, which will go great with those ribs. I actually got the idea to use beech wood to smoke from my father-in-law who uses beech wood to smoke his cured meats. Here's a picture of his special drying fridge which he uses to dry his cured meats and I hope you can smell this picture because it's the best smelling thing. It's the best smelling thing. So it started raining while I was cooking and I got worried so I quickly looked up if this electronic pellet cooker is weatherproof and according to the website's Q&A the answer is Yes. It's a little unnerving to let an electrical device operate in the rain, but it seemed to work just fine. Glad I got to do an impromptu rain test that I wasn't able to do in my full review. And it looks kind of badass with the steam from the rain. Around two hours later and the color looks fantastic. Also, my smoker tube puttered out halfway through. I bought that smoker tube when smoker tubes first became a thing, and I don't think it has very good airflow. I think some of the newer pellet tubes have better airflow. I also could have used pellets instead of smoking chips and that might have given me a, a better chance at a longer smoke, but I think half the smoking tube should be enough smokiness. I pulled these off and put the ribs on a bed of honey, added some squares of butter, brown sugar, more squeezes of honey, and added a little bit of my wine for some braising liquid. If anybody deserves to drink my wine, it's ribs. It's ribs. Made sure to wrap those ribs nice and tight by doing one fold and then another and crumpling the two sides to the middle. Then off to the kettle, we'll put that in for another hour. One hour up and I'll take that precious packet out, unwrap it, and man, it is beautiful. I think making ribs is the best thing 
that a human can do. Adopting a stray at the pound? No. Helping people out at a soup kitchen? Psh. Inventing a cure for all diseases? Absolutely not. It's making ribs. It's ribs. Before I put that sweet baby rays on, I want to taste the ribs with just the rub on. Mmm. It was very savory. It's not very sweet. It's more of like an herby, spicy rub. Not like spicy, but like spiced. And I actually really like it. I like these savory rubs. You know, it kind of reminds me of the Pit Barrel Cooker's Beef and Game Rub, but not in a bad way. I really like that rub too. Now, for the Sweet Baby Rays. Now, I've had people give me crap for liking Sweet Baby Rays. I had one person comment that I might as well put a Snickers bar on the ribs. First off, Snickers are delicious, so that's not very convincing. And secondly, I'm not eating ribs as a health food. You know what? I like what I like, and to me, Sweet Baby Rays is how I want my barbecue sauce to taste. I put those back on for a few more minutes so the sauce can caramelize, add some more layers, and had it on for some more minutes. Then it's time to take these off and perfection. Baby back ribs made on the Weber kettle with the Spider 22 attachment. You know, it's hard to see on camera, but there is a nice pink smoke ring. Let's try them. Mmm, they're a little overdone, but that rub is really good. It's savory and it complements the Sweet Baby Rays really good. It's actually a perfect combo. Really happy with that. And uh, that sound you hear is the is the spider shutting down. Shutting down. One minute left. The beech wood added the perfect amount of smoke. Even though it was half of the tube, it was enough. And then the competition blend pellets did the rest of the work. The ribs were slightly overcooked, but I think that's good enough for backyard barbecue. And actually, to be frank, my family basically likes to drink ribs off the bone. They like them overly tender, and I think that overcooked ribs actually make better leftovers. That is, if there are any leftovers. I really do love the Spider 22. It's very unique, and although it's very niche, it must have an audience because it's currently out of stock on their website due to high demand. They got a good product, so those Spider Grill people deserve some success. I like that it's hands-off, especially with the newborn. Although I counteracted that by painstakingly filming the whole process. My wife in particular loves that. I'm sorry, dear. I can't hold the baby right now. I'm filming barbecue sauce in slow motion. And then eventually when I do hold the baby, he smells like a plate of ribs, but I see that as a bonus. It's not a downside at all. Hey, would you like to wear a t-shirt like this? It's a pig ghost cooking itself. How disturbing and dark. You can wear that on your body. Or maybe you want a shirt that's inspired by the song my three-year-old made up. You can find them at the Red Cow Entertainment Tea Public Store, which will be in the description below. Until next time, bye!